At first glance, it looks like something out of a science fiction movie. The water might be like a little bit murkier than normal. But this is no sci-fi flick. And if you live in Florida, it could even be in your backyard. It's so bad that you're not supposed to be in the water. Like they'll close off beaches because they're so bad because it can be harmful. It's a toxic algae bloom when clusters of algae or plants that live in sea and fresh water multiply and grow at a harmful rate and can poison shellfish, marine life, and even people. Most of the times it can give you a rash, but if you drink the water accidentally, it can make you sick to your stomach. The actual cause of algae blooms is still a mystery, but they usually pop up in areas that experience rapid population growth, where things like wastewater and fertilizers can run off in the ocean. It can be a human health risk, right? So, right, right. so we're concerned about the things we eat. We want to make sure that you know that our seafood and our shellfish don't have toxins in them. That's just sort of a given, right? We want to make sure we're not going to eat, <laughs> eat poisonous food. Uh, but at the same time, there's a lot of ecological applications. You know, if there's marine animals that we care about, fish, shellfish, marine mammals, seabirds, those are all things that can uh, pretty frequently get um, negatively impacted. Students from the Florida Institute of Technology gather samples to find out what lurks in the murky water below. Well, that's one of the reasons why we do the research, because to figure out what, what the cause, real cause is, because it can be a combination of anything. Once they get a couple beakers full of samples, they run some tests for a closer look. When we go back to the lab, we uh, take a dropper and set up a sample slide, and then we look through the microscope for uh, 12 different species of toxic phytoplankton. If they find a high number of phytoplankton, also known as microalgae, in their samples, they've discovered a bloom. Believe it or not, toxic algae is not unique to one location. It's actually found on several areas on the east and west coast of Florida. Blooms have been spotted around the world, and the majority of them during the summer months. But in the U.S., Florida has been hit hardest. It's even affected parts of the Everglades, one of the nation's national treasures known for its natural ecosystem. And scientists say the tropical wetlands can be lost if the problem isn't fixed. Animals like this rosate spoobill, which has made a home in the Everglades for hundreds of years, are leaving because of the lack of fresh water. The algae blooms have cut off the natural flow of fresh water from the Kissimmee River and Lake Okeechobee all the way to Florida Bay. The Florida legislature recently approved a key project, a $1.5 billion reservoir designed to help restore some of that natural flow. If we got ourselves into this mess, we can figure out how to get ourselves out of it. Hopefully with new plans and a new generation of scientists, the toxic algae blooms will stop flowering. We're the future of the world, so what we do impacts the world that we live on and we kind of need the world to live because if we didn't have it, we wouldn't be here. So they need to really step on in and like, just help out. Ariel Hickson, Channel One News.